Hey, 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 welcome back to Beer Geek Theory Reviews. And today I got a beer that I've just been, I've been in the mood for something a little smoky, okay? Um, so I'm going to put it into said glass, not by the company. Um, anywho, let's go ahead and pop it open and get directly into this. It's been a long, long day and I've already been through you know, a couple. What? I seen this at the store when I went and I was like, well, let's pick up a bottle of it and give it a go. I have been into um, some more local beers lately and I thought this should do it, my friends. As you can see, it is a thirsty dog. I have not had this one. I, like I said, I, I've been going through a lot of out of state beers and have not given the local option a try and I am doing so this is their rail dog beer and yes even though you see the train there the dog is down here in the corner their their labels always always feature a dog one way or another it says that uh, this beer here is a smoked black lager. This lager has the most complex grain bill of any beer that we brew. In addition, we roast the grains in our ovens. In addition, uh, or excuse me, add our own proprietary apple smoked grain for an even more complexity. The final product is a smooth, easy drinking, a light smoked, delicious brew. And what's nice is that they give you absolutely every detail over here. Um, IB uses 24. They give you the OG, the FG, and the alcohol by volume is 6.7%. Um, let's see. It says, this beer celebrates the region's heritage of the railroad and many volunteers, they keep it rolling. Step back in time and enjoy the rail with us all aboard. Cuyahoga Valley Science, or, yeah, Railroad, uh, Pensula, Ohio. Hmm, I don't know, man. Arnie, an Ohio-born Irish wolfhound, loves to get out and run with the big iron dog like the information on here but the head has gone down enough of that little tidbit and we're left with you know a slight ring as as I tip forward you can see that it's got a nice pull got some nice lacing going on there let's get down here towards the black shirt see the lacing on the back side it's got a nice pull on it I like that Anywho, black is night just by the by the simple eye. Oh, some kind of like mahogany hues down here towards the bottom. You're not going to get that unless you get into a very bright light. I, my friends, am not my dear friend Dave Coulter. I do not have a big old bright light off here to the side or over there where you can see. I got my naked eye. Anywho, let's go ahead and get under it. A whiff on this beer. Ooh. It does have a tad bit of a smoke there, my friends. A smoky, charry kind of note to it. Biscuity malt quality does have that like black char smell to it. A little smoky. Very interesting. Let's go ahead and dive in. Prost. Oh. Mm. It is. It, it, it tends to be exactly what they said. It is very grainy tasting. There, there's a big, huge malt build um, to this beer. Definitely big, definitely malty, 
not a lot of hops going on here. It, it does have a, a kind of undertone, earthy hopness going on here. Um, more along the lines of, it's just there to balance this beer. Because if it wasn't, this beer would run rampant with, with big malt characteristics. And it would, it would just get away with itself. But there is a clean, if this makes any sense, it is very clean. Um, where you do get exactly what they said you're going to get. Up front, you're definitely getting the malts. You get that char, you get the biscuity note qualities, you get that crackery. How do I want to call this? Like the outside of the malt, like the, like the shell. Um, if you were chewing on some like dark malts, um, there is just a hint of coffee, maybe just a hint of chocolate, but it, it all follows through clean with that big smoke quality. It's not it's not overly done. It is, it is nicely subdued. Um, I, I was just talking to a friend on a um, on a chat with the the beer and bullshit show, um, and he said that he does like uh, smoke beers, and but but the one thing that he really likes about smoke beers is, is if they're done correctly, that you can definitely overdo a smoke beer because uh, Ranchiber style beers, I mean, they tend to definitely get. Um, ramped up with the smoke and overdone um, it, the smoke can it can run away with itself okay um, it, it's like if you do not have enough malt there if you don't have enough hops to kind of control it um, whether or not it's at, I would also assume um, are you adding it into the boil are you adding it into fermentation are you adding it in um, some people add liquid smoke, some people add, you know, just the roasted malt qualities, um, but it's all in how you do it and how you can control it. Um, so therefore, uh, a word to the wise with home brewers, if you're out there watching this, um, especially with uh, smoked beers, um, I, I would find a median, you know, in between, you know, too light and, and just, just on the fine line of, um, going overdone because of the sheer fact that you don't want it to be um, a, a lesser quality in your beer. You want it to stand out, you know, if you're making a Ranchaber or a black lager or a smoke lager or anything like that. Um, you do want it to stand out, but you don't want it to be overdone because of the sheer fact that there are a lot of people out there that do not like this style of beer because of that fact. But with that said, I'm going to go ahead and finish up this beer, and I'm going to get it to you guys later, man. Let me have another drink to send us on our way. <sighs> With that said, peace, pro deuce, and as always, man, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you disliked it. Hey, if you've had this beer or if you, you know, have had any smoked beers, man, let me know what you like or dislike about those beers in the comments below. And don't drink and drive, don't text and drive, and I'll see you guys later. And be safe because I don't want you guys getting pulled over paying more for you did than this beer or the beer that is in your set glass. Peace. See you guys up on the flip side.